Hi, this is Carrie Rhodes with CarrieStamps.com, your fun stampers journey coach. Today I'm sharing with you another cute project using my favorite, the note pocket die. This is the folded note pocket. I have created this in such a way that the top folds into the flap and it's also two-toned. So I'm going to show you how to make this today, but before we start stamping, let me show you what I put inside. This necklace is part of the Fun Stampers Journey jewelry line. Look at the three little charms hanging on this chain. It's, it's so cute. It's one of my favorites. It's actually a necklace that I wear all the time and it would make a great Christmas gift. Not only because it's so cute, but because during the month of November 2017, lockets and pockets are on sale. You should head over to my online store, funstampersjourney.com slash stamps and check out all the things available on this special and get shopping for Christmas. All right, I think it's time to start stamping. Here we go. Okay, so here is our folded note pocket. And I'm going to show you also how I made it two-toned. You can see the top is green and the bottom is red. And we open it up. And inside I have a little insert that holds my locket. This necklace is currently on sale. So that makes it a really good Christmas gift. It says dreams happen. Isn't that cute? And the teeny tiny star. So I'm going to show you how we made this two-toned folding note pocket. This is the note pocket die, just a simple die. It's one of my favorites. I've used it for so many things. You should check out some of my other YouTube videos for other uses I've done with this die. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut out two pieces. You're going to want to cut out just this portion. So when you cut that out, you're going to want to have your piece of paper die cut a little extra piece right here. It's not gonna come all the way down. You just want an extra flap here that's going to become the um, third flap that will attach to our second piece. So once you die cut that, it will come out looking like this. And see what I mean here? This is our third flap that will attach to our base piece. So you have the two sides, and now we've created this third one. So let's move our stamp set out of the way. And we're going to snip these corners just so they're angled like the ones we have here. That just makes it easier when you're folding up flaps. You don't have those corners overlapping and getting in the way. So it just helps um, for folding. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use our white liner tape and put some adhesive on those flaps. So I've turned it over and I'm putting the adhesive on the back. And I'm gonna do that for all three of the flaps. And this just tears really nice, which makes it easy to apply it. Okay, we've got those. Then we're gonna cut the base piece. When you cut the base piece, you wanna line this edge up with the bottom of your cardstock. And then you'll run it through your platinum machine to die cut it. And once it comes out, it looks like this. And so this is where the edge of the die was. So this is our perfect base. We just don't need these little tiny pieces that came out with it. So we'll snip those off just like that. Now we have our two pieces ready to be assembled, but in order to make it fold, we're gonna go ahead and score it. So let me bring in my paper cutter and we'll need our scoring blade, which we're going to insert just by snapping it in, that easy. We're gonna put this in and score it at three and one fourth inches. Like that. So now we have the flat part, the part that will fold. I always like to fold it back and then forth. And we'll use our crease tool to make sure that folds down really nice. Yeah, all right, this is looking good. Well, here's our bottom piece. And you might have recognized in my sample that there was a decorative element here. And that is from our Christmas cheer prints. How I made this so it lines up with the curve in my pattern is to take the die and flip it upside down and trace the inside of the die on the back side of the paper I want to use. Then I cut that out 
flip it over and it lines up just how I want it to with my pocket. So we'll go ahead and adhere that now. I'm going to use some craft glue and just going to trace the outline of this. You can see I'm not getting too close to the edge. That's because glue has a tendency to squish out when you press it down and we don't want it to come out of the edge of the paper and make a mess. So give yourself a little clearance there. All right, we have that mounted. That looks so cute. I love this paper. All right, now we're gonna make sure that these are folding nicely so we can adhere this to the base. Just fold on all the crease lines, first forward, then back. I find that most helpful. And then we're going to hook this on, starting with the bottom. That way you can line up the edge of the box or note pocket with that scored line just making sure that you have it kind of centered before you press down too hard. And then we'll flip this over and press down the sides. And we wanna really make sure that this tape is gonna hold and stick down. It's overlapping with each other, so I like to just go over it with my bone folder and make sure it's really pressed down good. Now, if you don't want, if you don't like this look on the back of your project, you could always cut another piece of this kiwi slice cardstock and mount it over the top to hide those flaps in the back. And here's our front. Now, what we're going to do is do our stamping. So you can see that when I, if I squeeze this, it puckers open, and then you can just tuck in the corners, and now you've got a nice folded little holder for something cute that can be a gift and we're going to stamp it using the Merry Words stamp set. I'm using the Noel image because it's got that pine bow that's also on my paper. I love that and we're going to emboss it with gold. So the first step we need to do is remove the static from our paper. So I'm using a pan pastel. This is our colorless blender but it also works great for reducing the static on the paper. So I'm just gonna rub that on. I'm leaving the pocket tucked in so I don't stamp too low. And we'll ink it up with the clear pigment ink. I'm also gonna get my gold embossing powder ready and a scrap piece of paper to pour off the excess powder. Ink up your stamp and stamp it where you like. We'll add our gold embossing powder, tap off the excess. I like to get rid of the extra powder right away, put it back in the jar and move it out of the way because I have spilled my embossing powder before. Then we'll go ahead and heat this up with our heat tool. There you go. All right, now we need to create the hole in the top. So I'm gonna bring in my press punch and I'm gonna lay this on here so I can kind of eyeball the center right about where that line is. Make a little mark. Now I am going through two layers. It's really only gonna go through the first layer so I'm just going to hold that and press down and then you can see me pump it a few times. I'm just pressing down and pressing down repeatedly so I can get through both layers. And so you can see I almost got through the second layer. So if it doesn't go through with a few um, extra presses, then you can just come back and do that one by itself. And there we have it. Got our nice hole there. I'm gonna just rub this with my hand to get off some of that colorless blender. I kind of put it on a little heavy this time. And we'll tuck this back in so we can add some more decorative elements. The first one I'm gonna add is one of my favorite ribbons. It's the Special Day Organza Ribbon. I love this ribbon because you can take your stamp pad and rub it across the top and dye your ribbon any color you like. You can see I've made a blue one. 
So it's a really cool ribbon to have. It goes with anything. All right, so I'm going to wrap this around and cut some off. And then I'm gonna tie a bow. Once you get your bow tied, then you can come back and play with the ends and adjust it so you can get it where you like it. Trim that end off. I pulled on this one a little bit, so it got a little fray, so I'm just gonna give a little haircut there. Isn't that cute with the ribbon? All right, I really want my center of my bow to be in this larger piece right here where it goes up, it's a bigger opening. And then I'm gonna accent that with a pre-made flower. These are our poinsettia burst accent pieces. Aren't they fabulous? They have a little um, gold spritzed on them and they're really vintage looking. I just, I really love them. So those do not have adhesive on the back. So what you'll do is just take a foam square and press that onto the center. And then you can peel the back off and add it right to your project. I'm gonna stick mine right above the bow. And then I can come in here and fluff up these leaves because it's been you know, stuck in that package and a little flat, so give it a little new life. Then we'll need a piece of twine. So I added the hole and the twine there so that you could um, hang this maybe from the tree. I thought hanging from the tree would be a nice little surprise with your necklace in it or a locket or cash. And you could also hang it from like a gift bag and have whatever's in this little pouch go with the present that's in the gift bag too. So it could double as a gift tag and as a present holder, a little gift wrap. So there we have it, quick and easy to do. And you can see the back there. Um, again, if you wanted to go ahead and cover that up, you could. Um, it doesn't really bother me, but you could um, do, here's my original one. On this one, I did not wrap it around the back. I gave it a try. The one thing that I found that kind of um, changed my mind about putting the flaps on the, so it touches the top of the green part is that when you go to put something in, it will oftentimes hit the little tabs. So let me just remove this necklace here. So when you go to put it in, you're bumping into that. So it's just personal preference how you want to do it. Once you really get this pressed open like this and you know those flaps are in there, you can kind of avoid them. The insert piece is just a three by three piece of paper that I notched and added my necklace to it. And it goes on there really easy when it's not all twisted up. So you just do a little snip with your scissors, nothing fancy, and that just goes right on there. Isn't that nice? I love this necklace, you guys. I don't wear necklaces very often because this part will wrap up in my hair. I have really long hair, and I just hate that. And this necklace, I've never had that trouble. It's never wrapped up in my hair. It's really good quality. I wear this necklace almost every day. It's one of my favorites, and it's um, the metal has held up really well. It's, you know, I don't have trouble with the, the fading and whatnot. So there you have it. Make sure and check out our lockets and pockets sale. Um, both of the the die and the necklace that I'm showing today are on special, so it's a great Christmas gift. You can find them at my online store, funstampersjourney.com slash stamps. Make sure you subscribe so you can see more cute things when I make them. I love to share my creations with you, and I will stamp with you again soon. Happy stamping!